Hello and welcome to this short video on cinema. Film is essentially moving pictures, like a flip book. The difference between a flip book and film comes down to the fact that we cannot see the individual frames of a film because they are being shown to us at 30 frames per second or more. The subject matter of cinema is as complex as literature, but even harder to pin down. The range of cinema is unrivaled by any other form of art. Some critics have developed a theory of film authorship known as auteur theory, which considers the director of a film to be its primary author, or auteur. The early film directors did most of the work on a film, including directing, producing, editing, and even acting. Early directors even focused on each frame of their films as a work of art in itself. An example of this kind of auteur includes D.W. Griffith, whose Birth of a Nation, released in 1916, is an epic at over three hours in length. Griffith was responsible for almost every aspect of the film's production, and despite its virulently racist story about the birth of the Ku Klux Klan, it is still considered a leading example of cinematic realism. Despite auteur theory and a critical focus on authorship, most people are more familiar with the stars of films rather than the directors. Let's take a look at the types of shots that are available to directors. First, we have the establishing shot, which is usually a distant shot that establishes an important location or figure in the film. A close-up, as you might expect, is a close shot of an important object or character that fills the screen. A long shot is where the camera is distant from the objects or characters being filmed. A medium shot, as expected, is somewhere between a close-up and a long shot. A following shot is where the camera keeps a moving figure in the frame, usually keeping pace with it. A point-of-view shot records what a character must be seeing from their perspective. A tracking shot has the camera moving in a straight line forward, backward, or to the side. A crane shot places the camera high up on a platform that can move up and down. With a handheld shot, the camera is carried by a camera operator, while recessional shots focus on people or objects moving away from the camera. A processional shot, then, is a shot that focuses on people or objects moving toward the camera. Besides shots, edits are vitally important in the construction of a film. These are the types of edit available to filmmakers. Continuity-discontinuity cuts either keep the narrative flow going or break it up while jump cuts move from one shot to a completely different shot, often without warning. Cut-ins are where a shot moves from long or medium to close-up in an instant. Cut-outs are the same thing in reverse. Cross-cutting is where two different scenes are alternated, usually with some similarity between the scenes that supports the contrasting shots. Dissolve occurs when one scene disappears slowly while the other appears as if beneath the first one. A fade is used when directors want to fade in from a black screen or fade out to one. A wipe occurs when a shot is replaced by another one in the frame, with a line between the two as the transition happens. A graphic match cut joins two shots with similar compositions. A montage is a sequence of shots that shows some activity happening in a shortened amount of time. Finally, a shot reverse shot edit is where a first shot focuses on a character and then what the character sees in the next shot. Films are great at inducing participative experiences. We often lose ourselves in good films and identify with the characters we see on the screen. Many of us use the movies to escape from the concerns of our everyday lives, focusing on the events and the characters and how they make us feel rather than the formal qualities of the film itself. However, the cinematic structure of a film can radically alter how we experience the events and characters portrayed. Sequences can be made continuous or episodic, for example. Sometimes the details of a film can be easily missed because the pictures keep moving despite the fact that we may not be finished looking at what is presented to us. We can become better at catching details if we view films more than once. We can learn about the language of films and zero in on what makes some such powerful statements. To this end, experiencing the classics of cinematic history can be useful in evaluating more contemporary works. Appreciating films in their context is an experience that allows us to cultivate our tastes and get more out of all of our viewings. One last thing. The techniques of filmmaking have been developed to the point where problems in how to shoot a film have abated. However, experimentation in film is still quite common. How to use technical achievements is now the primary concern of most directors. Some directors, like James Cameron, still push the envelope when it comes to technological innovation. That's about all the time we have for this lecture.
Thank you and see you soon.